Hello, so this is A Level Physics Winter 21 Paper 1 Variant 1. So let's start with question number 21. It says that two balls float on a surface of the sea. The balls are separated by a distance of 1.3 meter. We need to find the phase difference between the two balls. So in order to find the phase difference, we must realize that the distance between the crest and the trough, adjacent trough is 0.9 meters. So lambda becomes 1.8 because this distance is lambda by 2. So we have our lambda, we have the distance between the balls. So what we can do is plug in the formula distance, which is 1.3 divided by lambda, which is 1.8 multiplied by 360 degrees. So this would make up 260 degrees. So D is the appropriate answer. Question number 22 says that which statement about transverse or longitudinal wave is not correct. Longitudinal waves can be used to demonstrate diffraction. That's correct. Longitudinal waves can travel in a vacuum. That is not correct. So B is the appropriate answer. Question number 23 says that a glass tube is closed at one end and has a loudspeaker at the other end. A stationary wave is formed at with a node at the closed end and the tube and the sound have frequency f naught so that's a fundamental frequency there are no other nodes so the frequency of the sound is increased what is the frequency of the sound produces the next stationary wave so for the fundamental frequency the wavelength is lambda by 4 so it's the node and the anti node distance and for the next frequency it would be lambda by 4 plus lambda by 2 which would be 0.75 lambda or 3 by 4 lambda so for 0.25 lambda it was f dot so if it's 0.75 lambda then it would be 3 f naught so what we can do is say that the option is b question number 24 says that with which wave can the Doppler effect be observed? All waves including sound and light. Yes, that's the correct answer. Question number 35 says that which radiation could consist of wavelengths 0.5 nanometers? It is gamma and x-rays but it's closest to x-rays. So D is the appropriate answer. Question number 26 says that a string is fixed between P and an oscillator M. And between M and Q, the frequency of the oscillator is adjusted until a stationary wave is in both waves. The speed of the wave between P and M is twice the speed as between M and Q. So if the velocity is 2 here, the velocity is 1 here. So it says that which diagram represents the stationary wave pattern. So it follows V is equal to F lambda, V is directly proportional to lambda. So over here in this section the lambda should be double and in this section the lambda should be half. Yeah. So let's see part A over here it's 2 and over here it's 1 half wavelength. So 2 1. So that forms the appropriate answer. So the answer is A. Question number 27 says that a wave in a ripple tank is diffracted as it passes through a gap in the barrier. Which two factors affect the angle of the diffraction of the wave? The amplitude and the frequency of the incident wave? No. The amplitude and the incident wave and the width of the gap? No. The wavelength and the amplitude of incident wave? No. The, wave, uh, the wavelength of the incident wave and the width of the gap? Yes. It must be ideal for perfect diffraction. Question number 28 says that a light of wavelength lambda is incident on two narrow slits S1 and S2. The nth dark fringe from the central fringe is observed at point P on the screen, which equation is correct for all positive values of n. So for n is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And we have to see for the dark fringe. So uh, for dark fringe, it is destructive interference. So uh, the path difference is integral multiple of half wavelength so it must be lambda by 2 one whole lamb one whole lambda by 2 two whole lambda by 2 and so on so the equation for the part difference is either c or d let's see for the c part if n is equals to 1 then this would be 1 minus half 
if n is equals to 2 it would be 2 minus so it would become one whole lambda by 2 so this seems to be the correct answer let's check d also if n is equals to 1 it would become 1 plus half so that would be one whole lambda by 2 so it's missing the first interference which is of lambda by 2 so that's incorrect so c is the appropriate answer question number 29 says that a green light is incident normally on a diffraction grating which change would decrease the separation of the diffraction uh, maxima and the screen so n lambda equals d sine theta we need to see that what would decrease d increase the distance between the screen and the diffraction grating replace the diffraction grating that has a smaller separation between the slits replace the diffraction grating that has a fewer slits per length so replacing it with a fewer slits one would decrease n so that would decrease d as they are directly proportional so c is the proper answer question number 30 says that what is meant by electric field strength so electric field strength is the force per unit charge acting on a small positive charge so b is the appropriate answer so question number 31 says that three metal plates are shown the distance between them are shown electrons at x and y are given and the voltages are given it says that find the magnitude of the force on electron at x and at y so let's see the formula so we have our basic formula for force in electric field which is v q over d voltage the potential difference q the charge of electron and d the distance between the plates so let's plug in the values at x and y so after plugging in the values we would get 3 by 4 so that is a 0.75 so question number 32 says that current I is given by the equation I is equals to nave. The number density of the free electron is the cross-sectional area. V is the average drift velocity. G, Q is the charge on electron. Which relationship is not used in the derivation of the equation? So basically the equation derivation consists of number of uh, the total number of electron, uh, electrons are equal to the number charge density multiplied by volume and this further can be written as area into length which further is uh, put in the formula i equals to q over t which is n e over t which can further be written as n a n a l over t which further can be written as n a l over t can be written as v e so the formula which is not used is number density into area so c is the proper answer question number 33 says that a circuit consists of two resistors p and q the current in p is 2 amperes and the power is 18 watts the resistor q dissipates to 40 joules of energy and a charge of 40 coulombs passes through it what is the electromotive force of the power supply so voltage across p is p is equals to iv so v equals to p over i which is 9 volts this is vp and vq is energy supplied per unit charge 240 divided by 40 which is 6 so 6 volts plus 9 volts is 15 volts so d is the proper answer question number 34 says that the iv characteristics of two components are given which statement is correct for a current of 0.5 ampere the power dissipated in q is double that in p so for, for, for 0.5 amperes the power dissipated in p is 1 watt and in q it's 2 watts so that's correct a is the appropriate answer so for question number 35 it says to find the current in s over current in t we are given with the parameters we just need to see, uh, see that it's an inverse proportion so is over it so we can find it by doing this uh, given calculations and so the answer would be 4 so it's D so the symbol for oscilloscope is C so for question number 37 first apply the loop which would give you E equals to IR then apply XY voltage and substitute the equation which would give you 0 so that's it for this video do like and subscribe my channel for more videos thank you